Okay, today I'm going to be looking at how to uh, georeference historical aerial imagery in ArcGIS Pro. So ArcGIS Pro, there's some differences from, of course, ArcGIS Desktop. And this is something that comes up pretty often. You're maybe looking at GIS data, like here I have the City of Austin's GIS page. And you might find aerial photos, and you're like, wow, look, 1940, aerial photos, 19, you know, 80s, all these different years. But the thing is, is that they're not always georeferenced. And so, like, for example, if I'm interested in 1987 downtown Austin, I'll go check out the index, of course. And uh, through, from the index, I can see that downtown Austin is covered by J22. But that index is just where the approximate uh, aerial photo is located. It's not a georeferenced image. So this is a raw scan of geographic information. It's not GIS data yet. And so... Um, today, what I'm going to be looking at is how to turn this raw scan of a historical aerial photo into uh, GIS information. Uh, and we're going to do georeferencing to do that. And so you can see here um, on the footprint of the photo of downtown Austin, J22 is the image that we're interested in. I went ahead and downloaded that image. And so what I'm going to work with now is starting up um, ArcGIS Pro and adding in that image in georeferencing. So skip ArcGIS Pro a second to load up. And once it loads up, we're going to go ahead and make a blank um, project. No, actually, I would go with a blank map. Uh, this is more like what we were expecting with a blank map of ArcGIS desktop. I'm going to call this um, um, Austin uh, J22 1987. Why not something? Just to give it a project name. And we'll get this uh, project up and running. And so what we want to do here is to add in our our image um, use the base map that's available from the from uh, arcgis.com and georeference select points from the new, the old image with the uh, base map in order to um, see the uh, see the see uh, in order to take the spatial coordinate information and apply it through the georeferencing algorithms and so the first thing I want to work with is I want to look at um, adding in the data so I'm gonna go ahead and add in the uh, data that I put on my desktop and so I go here to my desktop I can see here's 1987 J22 be careful with these raster images whenever you double click in them remember you're going into the raster image and you're seeing multiple bands here because it's a grayscale image it only has one band um, but typically what I like to do is I like to download I want I like to add in the data uh, the rasters at this point uh, not within the, each individual band so go ahead and click there and don't double click click OK uh, once you add that in, um, the information is not georeferenced, so where is it going to show up? Um, ArcGIS is going to place it at a familiar place for some of us in mapping called Null Island. Uh, zero degrees longitude, zero degrees latitude. So if we go actually zoom in on that location, well actually maybe it will be easier, we'll zoom to layer here. Um, we can see that we have our image of downtown Austin, but as I zoom out closely, look where it's located it's located off the coast of africa and that's because that's uh zero degrees longitude zero degrees latitude we know that's not where that belongs uh we know that belongs in austin texas and so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in to austin texas and with ArcGIS, uh, or sorry arc pro uh, what you want to do is you want to hold the shift and z button in order to get the uh the zoom box and go ahead and draw a box uh, at the location that you're interested in zooming into and you see as I zoom in closer and closer to Austin, um, I can zoom into that area that we saw in the uh, photo and say, oh, okay, this looks approximately right. And whenever you're happy with what you see uh, and it looks kind of like what you had on the photo, this is where you want to apply the um, apply, the apply to fit to display function under georeferencing toolbar. So give this uh, a second under the imagery tab here on the ribbon, go to the georeferencing uh, toolbar. Whenever you start uh, georeferencing, um, it's going to apply to this layer that's, select that's selected. You can see here it's saying georeferencing uh, 1987 J22. And what we want to do is we want to uh, fit to display. And what that's going to do is it's going to take it off that null island and it's just going to place it here on the display. Again, is that the perfect georeferencing? It's not, it still needs some um, work. And so this is where we're going to do things like uh, moving and scaling and so forth. Uh, what I like to do is I like to move the uh, image very uh, uh, 
a lot to where it gets into almost exactly the right spot. And so I can see here, uh, you know, for one particular point. And then at that one particular point, um, I want to zoom in and choose that as a control point. And so if I zoom in here and I look at the, uh, let me turn off the fit the display for a second. Uh, sorry, turn off the move for a second so I can get a clear view of this thing. Um, okay, well, yes. So you can see here that bridge right there. That's what I want to line up right now is the going to be the, um, this is the South First uh, Street Bridge. And so if I go back to the move, uh, what I want to do is I want to click on that part of South First Street Bridge, and then I want to look for it here. So uh, let's get, it's just a little bit of a lag, but this should work. Okay, yes, good. And so I can see that South First Bridge is, let me move this again right here and so what i want to do is i want to take those two points and line them up with each other so perfect that's lined up and then once i do that i want to go ahead and to zoom in and so uh, let's switch back to uh, explore and zoom in on that area and so uh, right now I'm having the topographic base map. That's not the ba best base map to work off of. And so what I want to do is I want to add an aerial imagery base map. That's going to be closer to uh, something that we can use to find um, different uh, different things to corresponding points. And so when I switch that over, I can see that uh, there's the bridge and there is the uh, center island between the split of the one way into the two way street bridge. And uh, I think that that little area right there is a good place to uh, choose a control point. And so under, again, if I go back to georeferencing, I can say add control point. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the control point from the source, from the georeferencing image. And I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to apply it to the uh, base map. And so the key here is to be uh, as zoomed in as possible. I would say... Even this one that I just did, I could have zoomed in a little bit closer. For the next one, let's try this a little bit more zoomed in. Uh, let's look at Congress Bridge. This is the famous Congress Bridge with the Austin bats that come out every uh, night. And so let's go ahead and uh, zoom in onto that one by, again, pushing Shift and Z button and uh, drawing a box that would encompass on the source layer of the bridge uh, intersection with E. Cesar Chavez and of course the bridge intersection on the base map and so if I turn off the map here you can see that intersection quite well and so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that intersection as the um, as the control point and so I go back to georeferencing um, I want maybe actually to zoom in a little bit closer let's just zoom in a little bit closer here uh, closer the better always with georeferencing so I'm going to add a control point here at the intersection. I'm going to go to the center of the intersection. And then I'm going to go to the corresponding center of the intersection here. Okay, so if I've done the first two control points well, uh, then I should find that the map, uh, sorry, the aerial photos should start lining up pretty well. And so I can see here, just off of the positioning and the scaling off those two points, I got a pretty good, uh, pretty good fit onto the base map. But what I can do is that I can choose uh, five more, uh, I need to choose, sorry, two, uh, three more control points with a minimum of five control points in order to uh, get good um, referencing. And so what I can do now is, uh, since I have a good fit, is that I can zoom in pretty much anywhere on the photo and I'm going to get uh, corresponding points that I can choose. The most ideal way to have um, aerial photos is to choose a point in each corner plus the center. So I'm planning on doing at least maybe four more points, one for each corner and one for the center. So let's go ahead and try doing one up here for the corner. Oh shoot, cancel that. That was not what I wanted to do. Um, so, well, yeah, this is a good good thing. So I accidentally made a point that's no good and I messed up my, fo my photo. Um, what I can do is I can delete that control point. So if I go to the control point table, that third one that I just done is the one that I messed up. So I'm going to click on that and delete the control point and get rid of it. And so that's gonna get me back to where I was. And so what I wanna do is I want to do the explore, zoom in onto this area, zoom in a little bit closer. Let's try this intersection over here. And let's turn off and see, verify the intersections are matching up. Yes, they are. And let's go ahead and add that control point in at the intersections to get it nice and close. Okay, so now we got three 
Let's go ahead and do the uh, fourth one. So I'm going to zoom in into this corner area. Let's try something on IH35 with this uh, bridge. We can try one of these intersections. I personally prefer uh, intersections. Uh, you do not have to use intersections, of course. Uh, one thing that I do suggest, though, is to, to stay away from uh, buildings, uh, the top of buildings. That can be um, a problem um, because of the, um, the slant, uh, the artificial view of a slant that comes in because of the position of the lens of the aerial photos. And so I would try to stick to things that are on the ground, uh, closer to the ground level. Uh, that's going to make your uh, your referencing much better. And so I'm going to go for this corner now. Um, let's try uh, railroad track crossing. Uh, let's see what it looks like today. Uh, some railroad tracks seem like they've been abandoned, but we still have here this line. Um, so let's go with uh, this line over here. And so um, control points. Okay, and let's go with this one. Good. And so... The thing is, is uh, you can start seeing the um, error that's coming in through the algorithm uh, from the auto adjust um, because we're starting to get enough points to where we can start getting the error generated. Uh, but still, I'm going to go with that that sixth point in the middle just to anchor it down with the middle. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to go into an intersection and choose a control point again. So here, and let's see if we can see uh, what I was talking I was talking about a second ago with the um, building slants. And so you can see here, um, this building, well, this building seems to be slanting. Okay, here's a good example. It's slanting this way. We can see the edge, the sides of the building over here uh, because the lens, oh, sorry, too zoomed out. The lens is here in the middle. Um, the more you get away from the lens on the photo, the more of a slant you should see. And so if we go out here into this edge, let's see over here into this area, we should see now this side of the building. So this is a problem because if you were to choose a building to georeference, and then if you look at the base map, um, the, the lens wasn't, the, you know, the, the photo wasn't shot in the exact same spot as, um, as wherever it was shot in the past. So um, sorry for zooming in a little bit, but you can see here that the slant, for example, on this building is over here. Uh, but if I turn this one on, well, that building's not there anymore because uh, it wasn't built in 1987. Let's see here. Uh, this building over here, you can see the slants right there. If I turn off, well, <laughs> that shows downtown Austin how much change there's been. Um, let's go over here. This is a historic building. Uh, so this one is going to be available on both. And so you can see here, I can see the sides of the building at the uh, north and the east side. When I turn this off, now so I don't see that. I see it on the south side more and that's because of the position of the lens and so that's why you want to be careful with choosing tops of buildings because because it protrudes from the from the ground um, you might be uh, choosing a, a part that could be 20 30 meters off if you go with the with the stuff that's on the ground you're going to have a much better uh, reference okay so now that I georeferenced it what you want to do is you want to zoom out check out the photo do a visual inspection it seems like Everything's matching quite well. The photo doesn't seem too distorted in its appearance. And then we want to check the control uh, points and see what the residual error is. And so here we can see the different residuals. Um, they're all under five right now. That's uh, quite well. That's a good uh, georeference, uh, georeferencing. Uh, residuals, you want to keep them under uh, 20. Um, or in general, under 15 is good. Uh, and then to say... 15 is acceptable, 10 is good, 5 is, is awesome. And so we can see here everything's under 5, and this is going to be based off of the uh, the, the unit that's uh, of the map, which is in meters. And so here, if we saw that, that was good. Um, also, if we look here, we can see a total residual uh, at 3, which is also uh, very good. And so we can say we're pretty happy with this uh, georeferencing. If you're happy with this georeferencing, what you want to do is go ahead and hit save. What that's going to do is start generating um, files. And so if I hit I hit save and um, close georeferencing. And so now that photo is georeferenced. If I go back to the desktop where I had the photo, look what happened now. 
I just downloaded this photo. It's the only image I had, the only file I had. And now two uh, additional files, associated files to J22 were generated. The SDWX file and the auxiliary file. The SDWX file is what's going to uh, store the information that has to do with georeferencing. And this is called um, the world file. So this is SID world file because I was using a seamless image database file. And so you can see here the different coordinate systems that get populated into the uh, different coordinate information gets populated into the into the SDWX, and then now that now that's something that we can say, okay, that's a georeference file. If I remove this file and I go and re-add it in, what's going to happen is that the computer or the GIS is going to actually take that SID that SDW file, the SID world file, and when I add this SID in, it's going to go and place it in the appropriate spot. So now this is what we would call geographic information. And so now we used ArcGIS Pro to take a scanned uh, aerial photo and apply coordinate information to it through geo georeferencing process and to make it into geographic information now that we can use for mapping.